I've seen it, and I still can't believe it. The Toronto Blue Jays have won another World Series, coming back from three games down to beat the LA Dodgers. The reverse sweep, the series of the century, the result that certainly didn't seem likely, especially with all the changes that we had made to the lineup. We had some doubts, the whole deal with Chris Sale, me trying to do what I could, listening to to viewer feedback in the comments. I couldn't get anything to work. And yet, we still won it all. As ridiculous as that is. Ender and Ciarte, Reese Hoskins, Vlad Jr. against so many players on this team that I didn't expect to have. But you factor in free agent signings, some wheeling and dealing with some trades, having to get rid of some of the initial guys, and of course just having a little bit of luck in terms of flipping our outfield and getting Reese Hoskins in return, which, you know, was tremendous for us. 42 home runs in the regular season. You factor in Jr. turning into the player that we needed him to turn into. What a team. What a run this was. And now... We get to focus on doing it all over again. (laughs) We get to try and rebuild this team from here. I'd imagine we'd have a contract offer. We start off with retired players, and Edwin Encarnacion surprisingly doesn't retire. Uh, We lose Adam Walker and Derek Gutierrez. Uh, Dustin Pedroia retires, among others. But shockingly, we really... Don't lose anybody, and Jose Reyes ends up making the Hall of Fame, which really isn't all that surprising, at least to me. So with that, um, I was going to say, what are our new contract goals? We haven't re-signed with the team yet? No, we have. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's right, because they turned off the firing. Uh, So the yearly goal is to reach the postseason, and yet again, the goal by the end of the contract is to make it back to the World Series, which is not all that surprising. Now, we do have some things to work out. Uh, coaching staff wise and of course our cash flow is ridiculous enough uh, that I can bring in anybody Uh, so there's a decent chance of Dave Roberts being the next head coach Eduardo Jordan's not terrible but the plus three to bunting is kind of pointless and you have Mike Sosha so in total I mean yeah Dave Roberts you just can't beat it with the plus threes it's insane how good he actually is so there's no doubt Dave Roberts is the guy to go for. Maybe a Mike Sosha or even a Tony La Russa, uh, just off of you know familiarity, really, uh, would be the people to go for. Let's see if we can bring in Dave Roberts. He's looking for eight mil a season. I wanted to gauge the interest on that. Obviously, we're going to have to offer him quite a bit more. How about nine million a season? What's your feedback to that? A little bit more. Nine and a half per. Should be enough to get that up to a full value bar, and hopefully that's good enough. For him to sign. There we go. A little bit left there. The value bar is not at 100%. But that is hopefully good enough uh, to bring him back. Eric Delgado is our current hitting coach. And I can't imagine if there's anyone better again. Power, discipline, and clutch with a minus to bunting. Uh, Power, contact, drag bunting. Yeah, I think Delgado is still going to be the best guy. Clutch, vision, and power. I'm thinking he's the right guy to keep. Although, clutch power and discipline. Two, two, and three. Eh, You know, it's the same thing. So we're good. Eric Delgado can stay. Uh, Is there a pitching coach aside from Parker Cross who is worth uh, going after? Let's find out now that we just have the money to really make any changes we have to. So Bobby Henley doesn't provide major changes. Neither does Brian Kuyper. Uh, they don't provide major changes, but they also don't have any negatives. As opposed to Parker Cross, it's a minus one to control. I think I think we're okay. I think we'll leave him. No real reason to miss out on the money there. First base coach, anybody better? Minus three to blocking. I think, yeah, pretty much good. Could bring in Freddy Gonzalez, but I'd rather not waste the money. I think we're good. Uh, Troy Moen would be the only other guy as a farm director. And at that point, bringing in an Eduardo Jordan or even bringing in Mike Sosha would probably be a good way to go since there are no negatives. Still, I'm going to, ah, well, you know, in fairness, in fairness, 
Getting those guys under contract us would be nice. I think we're okay, though. A minus one, the blocking is not a big deal. We'll save the money. We'll see if we can bring in Dave Roberts. And now we get to move on to the exclusive free agent negotiations in which Chris Sale has a player op. I am wondering what he's going to do. Uh, he has not made a decision yet. Okay, so we still don't know. It's amazing that we won without him. Uh, Brad Hand as well. I mean, obviously we look at what he did in the regular season. Solid. He is 31, so he's not the long-term solution, but we did win the World Series with him, which was the point. Uh, so I think, really, because we don't have any in-house options yet, uh, Jerome, German, or James, who might be good enough to replace him in the future, uh, for now, we're going to look to bring Brad Hand back. Uh, again, we could send out a qualifying offer, and if somebody signs him, then, of course, we get a little bit of compensation in terms of extra draft picks. Uh, not really worth it for us right now when we're still looking to be competitive. Although him wanting $5 million a year is a bit crazy. Because I'm thinking, like, two. He also wants five point two a year. Uh, let's see how much I can drop that by. I'm going to try to save as much money as I can here. Let's go 4.5 a year. He probably won't accept that, but hey, it's worth it if he does. Uh, DJ LeMayhew as well, of course, was great in the regular season, great in the postseason. We'll be looking to keep him around, despite the fact he's getting a little bit up there in age. I'm going to go one year, and again, we'll just kind of keep it around $9 million. Uh, So not too far off what he's looking for, aside from term. Just initial offers, if they accept this, tremendous. If they don't, then it is what it is. Uh, Jake McGee was amazing. I do wonder how much he's going to regress. We don't have a qualifying offer available, so it's either we re-sign him or let him go. It's worth bringing him back just to see if we can uh, trade him out, basically. So let's go 2.5 for one year. Avisail Garcia was pretty damn good. He didn't play the full season. He was great when he played, though. Uh, we'll look to bring him back. And, of course, he stepped up in the postseason at certain times. Let's try to go for a two-year deal and see where we can drop that. Let's go eight and a half, just as an early offer. Tyler Lyons was also great in the regular season. Again, getting up there in age. We'll go for one year. A little bit unlikely that he signs it. Let's go 2.7. Uh, Matt Duffy. At the very least, it's worth bringing him back instead of letting him go for nothing. I don't think he'll get an offer, at least not at a half-decent time. And it won't be really a high enough offer that will get any decent compensation for him. Uh, so we might as well just look to re-sign him and then trade him and get whatever we can out of it. So we'll lowball him a little bit. And then, Mr. Encarnacion, we are going to just let walk for obvious reasons. Might pick him back up later on, though. If it, uh, it kind of makes sense to bring him back, you never know. As Dave Roberts has immediately accepted our offer, our offer as manager, so Dave Roberts, the new manager of this club, and the majority of players have signed their contracts. It's just Brad Hand and Matt Duffy who have not accepted. We still need to wait to see what happens with Chris Sale. Still hasn't made his choice. That's unfortunate. Uh, so Hand and Duffy are the only two that we're waiting for, but everybody else, LeMayhew... Uh, Eviso Garcia, they're all coming back. I'm so tempted to bring back Edwin, but like I said, he's going to continue. I mean, it's it's not really worth it. He might come back, but he's regressing now at such a quick rate. Uh, it could be worth having him, though, as a power pinch hitting option, but that's not something that we need to decide on right now. As, uh, okay, Duffy accepted. Chris Sale, have you made your choice yet? Still no. Still no. How much time do we have? Four days. One more day. And Chris Sale is going to free agency. <sighs> All right, you know that sucks, but that was the risk that we uh, that was the risk that we were that we were taking there. So let's focus on Brad Hand. At the very least, I can send him a qualifying offer, right? So that's that's a guarantee. We still have, and in hockey terms, we still have his rights. Consider Chris Sale right now as an RFA. If we qualify him, right? Uh, again, we'd have, if he accepted it, a one-year $18.5 million contract. There's no way he comes back. So if he signs elsewhere, we get compensation for that. Think of it as an offer sheet in hockey. Uh, so we may very well let Chris Sale go. And to be honest, he took quite a step back after last season anyway. Uh, you look at what he did, had done in Boston 
uh, over the first two seasons of this sim compared to what he had for us here might be for the best to just let him go and get compensation. Brad Hand, though. Brad Hand. Again, we offered two and, what, nine million total? So two years. Let's go up to... I mean, we offered nine million total. I'm surprised he didn't accept that. Let me go up to 9.5, and then again, Edwin can stay there. We have three days to work out these deals. Hand still hasn't accepted, so he's in the same boat. Uh, with sale, we are going to send the qualifying offer, so we'll see what happens there. I'm pretty much content to let him go. Of course, the injury in the postseason, you factor in his numbers last year. Now, is it makes sense to keep him, but it also makes sense to let him go at 32 years old. He is going to get offers for like five years, and we're not offering a 32-year-old pitcher a five-year deal. There's no way. Uh, and with Brad Hand as well, I think I'm just going to offer him what he's looking for. Uh, slightly under. Let's go $5 million. So $10 million over two years. If he doesn't accept, we'll have to send out a qualifying offer as well. Let's see. He hasn't accepted either. Okay. So we will qualify Brad Hand. And we will also send him out an offer as well. I could still send out an offer for Chris Sale. Uh, let's go two years at 5.2 for Brad Hand. We'll see if he accepts that. Edwin, again, I'm sorry. you got to go for now. And then Sale. Yeah, see, look at that. As far as an expectation, or, you know, as far as, like, an expected salary for him goes, 31 million, five years. There's just no way. There's no way. I mean, look at his interest in us right now at five years, 31 million a year. There's just no way. Again, it makes sense to keep him, but the amount of money, if I drop that down to two years... I'm already offering him max money. 31 is the most. A two-year deal, we're probably going to be outbid. I mean, even then, if I do a 15-year deal, it only goes up by that much. So, really, it is just kind of uh, an up-in-the-air thing for him. Depending on who else is in free agency, we may make an offer. But let's move forward, and we'll see what we can do from there. We'll keep an eye on the situation with those two. Uh, Clayton Kershaw is a free agent. Mike Trout is a free agent. Corey Kluber and Mookie Betts, also free agents, and Wade Davis. Oh my god, this free agent class. Right. Where the hell do we begin? You know where we begin? Uh, we go through by just outright releasing a bunch of the players that we do not need. A bunch of the depth guys. So let's get rid of Jeff Arnold. Uh, Nick Rickles can be on the way out. I could totally just jump cut this to save a little bit of time. And so, I will. All right, so we're good. All the uh, all the dead weight has been cut. Basically, the D potential guys are for the relievers. Of course, we had a lot of overage relievers uh, that were just there to take up roster spots, wanted to get rid of all of them. Of course, we weren't at risk of losing anybody in the Rule 5 draft anyway, but I wanted to free up those spots in case we had any half-decent free agents to sign uh, that were prospects more than anything. As far as arbitration goes, or at least this first, I mean, Zach Eflin, Jesus, you are you are getting all the money. Mr. Eflin, and I can go three years at 3.4, and you would still be content with it, which is phenomenal. Uh, let's try to get at you with 3 million? That's a little bit too low. You know what? No, let's let's pay that man his money. Let's go 3.4 over three years with a rotation spot for Zach Eflin. DeShields, of course, great regular season, a little bit rough in the postseason, although he was the World Series MVP, strangely enough. Now, he is expecting to be an everyday player, which I don't think will be the case. There's a decent chance that I end up trading him, uh, but for now, of course, it's worth signing him. Kyle Crockett, 77 overall, 29 years old, C potential. There's just, wow, you're looking for 1.6 to be a depth guy, huh? He is a 77. You know, I'll sign him to this. Decent chance he gets moved as well if he is not needed. Uh, let's go 1.5. And Gabriel Lino is the other guy that needs to be signed. Let's go three years. Wow, you're looking for a lot. But still, uh, we'll give him what he's looking for. Just to not lose him for free. And then in terms of tendering contracts, here comes the fun stuff, right? So, see, this, is, this also helps, right? So it's like I cut Nick Rickles. Now I don't have to worry about it. I can just go through and check every player. Uh, like Trejo, who that's good to sign you for. Ben Mesa, that works. Stevenson, we might have a little bit of a log jam at catcher, especially with Stevenson. We can go three years at seven, 
three three. He wants a platoon roll as well, which is a little bit concerning. Uh, but we'll see what happens there. First base, Alex Julio. We put on release waivers. I mean, I might end up bringing him back to be honest. But like I said, I wanted to free up the roster spot. Del Abate. That works. I don't think you'll be anywhere close. And McGrath is also on waivers. Trent Beal. Let's go for the three years at 800K. Gavin Biggio. Let's give you a tiny bit more money. Let's go 250 for one year. Louis Bichette's on uh, waivers. Ken Pulison. Pulison. I'm going to go with Pulison. And we'll sign him up. Willie Galvis. Gonzalez can be signed. Azul's on waivers. Shortstop. Bo Bichette's. This will be interesting. Two years at two mil. Perfect. Quick and easy. Uh, Andreas Arias as well. We'll go three years at one million even. Looking for a platoon role. Of course, he has a lot of speed. Sean Bassett's on waivers. Uh, this dude is not. We'll sign him up. Ronaldo Roth, sign him up. Alan Ferris. Beautiful. Of course, we have a lot of shortstop death. De uh, death? <laughs> we have a lot of shortstop death. God, God damn, that's shortstop death. Shortstop depth. The depth, ha. Huh? Depth, ha. I'm sorry, it's late. Tim Tebow's on waivers. I'm sorry, but the meme had to die for now. I might bring him back, okay? I'm sorry. Uh, Uribe, Holmes will sign as well. Brian William, you're missing an S. And Jason Valley. Right field, we have Reyes. We can go three years at 590, so we'll go 600K. Closers. Let's go for James Who. Who could honestly get paid a little bit more. And German. Let's also pay you a little bit more. There's an outside chance of you appearing in the bullpen next season. Uh, Jordan Hicks. Only 24. You can go three years at 700k. That's a pretty damn good deal for him. Carlos Ramirez will go three years. Wow, that's... That is way under value at 560. Uh, to be honest... He's always, he's always going to be pissed off about the money unless I hand him like 700k. Uh, so I'm going to be smart about it and hand him about 700k. Danny Barnes, again, someone else I'd prefer to re-sign rather than lose for nothing. 700. Cortez, hand you a little bit more money just in case you make some good progression. Mirren's on waivers. Jason Jester's on waivers. So see, this is where it really helped out with all these guys. Just outright release him. You don't have to worry about accidentally signing anybody that you don't want to. Lester Martin. Three years at one mil. Good deal. Sean Reed Foley, who might not be around that much longer. We'll go quarter of a mil. Andreas Vasquez. We'll give him the same deal. Leandro Montanez. Now, I fully expect some of these starters to decline just because of the amount of, uh, the amount of competition that's there. And, of course, that's, that's really the one thing I think that's kind of overlooked as we head into... This offseason is we have quite a bit of starting pitching depth right now. It's pretty ridiculous. So losing a Chris Sale, uh, if we decide not to bring him back, which, again, might be the smartest move, it's not It's not a, you know, a killer. If we take a look at our roster here, and if you look at who we have, Quintana, I mean, 68's a little bit low for a 21-year-old, and we have quite a few B potential guys. We have the talent on the roster to overcome it. Uh, but we're looking okay. So we've taken care of all that. The only thing left is free agency, of course. And the first thing I want to do above all else is look for some decent prospects. If there's anybody on the list, of course, it pays to check during free agency. It also pays to check at the beginning of spring training, which is why I like to keep the roster as open as possible. Unfortunately... Like, even Steven Doty isn't looking that good at this point. Uh, no catchers available. What about first baseman? And, of course, it also gives you a look at some of the big names that we have available on the free agent list. Of course, catcher, we're good. There's really no one that we have to bring in. First base, I mean, if we still play junior there, we are solid. I mean, Justin Bohr, someone who's available at 32 years old, that's not exactly uh, going to do anything for us. And then Edwin Encarnacion, of course, also there. We have any prospects. Albert Clark, 22, 56, and a C. He's not great, but I'll still throw him a contract. Uh, and Mike Goots, the Goats. Let's go for the Goats. Let's not. He's not that good. Uh, second base, Eduardo Nunez. Of course, we still have LeMahieu, uh, who's actually a year younger, which blows my mind. Uh, we're looking good here. 
Looking good. There we go. That's why we look. Art Matheny. Second, third, and short. The 18-year-old. Looking good. Slightly low durability rating, but Art Matheny uh, is one hell of a prospect to try and sign. I'm going to hand him a decent amount of money. Uh, that is the type of guy that we are looking for. He's only a C potential, but still. That is a signing that could turn out to be very solid for us. Alan Banks is there. Uh, Jeff Rico, the overall is a little bit low, but I'm still going to try to sign him. And that's looking good there. Second base, we have Justin Turner as the uh, the top prize, so to speak. We will send an offer to Zach Cassidy. Anybody else? Uh, Karoski, not really worth it. Hernandez, not really worth it. Sean Walker, slightly worth it. If we can develop him to get his value up. Same with Rick McLeod. We'll send you a deal for the hell of it. Gonzalez, not so much. And Emmett Gillespie. You know what? You might have some value for us at like the, the lower levels. Again, if we can get him playing time in the minors, might be able to boost up that overall a little bit and trade him for something. You know, that's the type of player where if you can develop them, uh, pair them up, you know, with like three of the same type of player, maybe snag a B potential guy out of it. Uh, Eric Williams, let's sign you up. Chuck Rodriguez, unfortunately, that D potential is uh, not looking too good. In left, who do we have? Absolutely nobody. Okay, in center, who do we have? Of course, big name options are there. Sherwood Woodyard. Oh my god, what a name. Yes, please. Uh, Mariano Jimenez, not so much though. Sherwood Woodyard. That is incredible. And from there, we're looking good. So for pitchers, I don't know why I prefer to check pitchers last. I do. I don't know. It's weird, but hey. As long as we end up checking everything that we need to check, right? Who cares? Ooh, Castro. He's a D potential, but he's a 75. I don't care. He is worth signing right now. And him a big money deal. Hopefully he signs. Only thing that could stop him is just the amount of uh, options that we have already. Oh, James Koo, McClure, Darren Jones, not so much. Miguel Flores, though, not too bad. Anybody else? Fitzgerald at 23. You know what? I'll send you an offer as well. Not looking too bad. Uh, 21, Trevino, I'll sign you up if we can. Elijah Monroe, will sign you up if we can. We're looking pretty good here for these kind of low-level options. Uh, Karecki, not so much. And then for starters, again, the big moves, of course, will be if we go for any of the major options, uh, which we very well could. But let's just go ahead and look for prospects here. Like, there we go. There we go. Joel Pina. 19 years old, 6 foot 5, B potential, 71 years old. That is the type of signing uh, that could be a game changer for us down the line. We'll look to hand him a decent amount of money. Tremendous. Also, Cody Medeiros uh, is actually looking for a half decent deal, huh? Let's go one year at mm, 600? 600 is a lot. I'm still going to sign him, though. I'm still going to sign him. Anybody else? Uh, Luis Aguilera, D potential, unfortunately. Let's see, Steve Crespo, try to sign him up, hopefully we're outbidding, Lloyd Dominguez, still worth signing, might be able to flip him for somebody else, Jack Brennan, not good enough, unfortunately, with that D potential, same for Carmona, and that's that, so we have sent out quite a few offers just to prospect level, uh, players, of course, Brad Hand as well, so the big thing is what do we do for these big name offers, of course, starting pitching, Kershaw's there, Sale's there, Corey Kluber at 34, there's no way. Like, I'm not going in for Corey Kluber. Uh, he still had a pretty damn good season, but it's going to it's gonna bottom out eventually. Like, there's just no way at 34 that he's going to maintain that. And again, uh, in fairness, the money the money's looking okay, but do we really want to sign Corey Kluber? It'd be nice to get him away from the Indians and kind of do what we've done with Chris Sale, you know, two-year deal, player option. If you bail on us, hey, we at least get something for you in compensation. But he's pretty much he'd pretty much be the only guy that we could afford to sign, right? So Kluber's great. There's no doubt about that. We made it through him in the postseason, though. Uh, but he is 34 years old. Then there's Chris Sale, which, you know, he's 32. He had a down year for us, but right now we are in line to get compensation for him so if we were going to go for any pitcher, 
Clayton Kershaw might be the guy because we sign him for two years. We also get compensation for Chris Sale, which again would be in the form of higher draft picks. You know, it might make sense. And Kershaw has been phenomenal over these first three years of the sim. Under a three ERA, and of course last year was his best year, at least in terms of ERA. That was amazing. We really couldn't go wrong with any of the three. Kershaw's... I mean, Kershaw or Sale are the best options, but again, if we can get compensation from Sale and then walk away with the Kershaw, we're looking good. Chris Archer is also an option. Um, Year one was pretty good. Year two, pretty bad. Last year, eh, he he was okay, right? So he hasn't been tremendous. He's also 32 years old, so he'd be the type of guy where if we miss out on one of the big names, we could go for him. Uh, Same for Jose Quintana, who, again, a 3, 4, and a 3, so nothing too great. Jake Arrieta, not bad, but again, 35. That'd be a one-year deal. That's pretty much it. We could look to bring back Marcus Stroman. And in fairness, Stroman's never put up over a 4, but he's, you know, his lowest has been a 3, 6, 8. So, and he's been traded multiple times. Gio Gonzalez, just to get a look at his numbers. Eh, one good season and two bad seasons. Kyle Hendricks has been pretty good as well. And, I mean, when you get a look at the pitchers that we have right now, it really makes sense to only bring in, like, one major guy. And even then, if we bring in a major guy, you'd be talking about probably moving a a Lamette or a Wood because we'd want Zach Eflin in the rotation. We want Diego Liriano to be in the rotation and Jamison Tyon. So it really kind of makes sense to only bring in one of these guys. I mean, maybe two if we wanted to make crazy moves. So... It's really our decision is, you know, what do you guys think as well? That's why that's why we're going over this. I'm leaving you guys options for the next episode uh, when we move forward. Do we go for uh, do we go for Kershaw? Uh, do we look for a, you know a quieter option? Again, I've, I've shown you the numbers for like an Archer who's just been okay. Same for a Quintana. Arietta's been a little bit better, but he's older. Stroman's been at least consistent, but not great. Gio Gonzalez, no. Uh, Hendricks has been okay. The last two seasons have been pretty good. He's 31. He might be a cheaper option. And then from there, I mean, someone like a Tanaka, the numbers are okay. But, you know, overall-wise, he's not better than anybody else. But as we learned with Zach Eflin, overall isn't always everything. So let me know as far as that is concerned. Relief pitching, I mean, we still have Reed, Hendricks, McGee, Givens, Lyons. Uh, Blake Parker, though might be worth going in for on a one-year deal because last year he was spectacular with a 106 whip. The the whip. So that's looking okay. It's looking okay. He had 20 holds as a setup man last season. 0.7 wins above replacement, huh? Might be a half-decent option. Uh, Tyler Thornburg, not so much. Brad Peacock, not so much. What about Conley? Not so much. Uh, so if we were to go for a reliever, it would probably be Blake Parker, uh, which we could do just to send in a little bit of competition. Uh, he's, he's not looking for the most expensive deal either, so maybe we will go for a Blake Parker. But then there's the option of some extra closers, and of course if Brad Hand does not re-sign with us, uh, we will probably look at a Wade Davis on a one-year deal. He's been okay. Uh, Ken Giles, though, might be my first option. Had a great season last year. And, of course, Brad Hand. Doolittle, of course, we traded because he was really slipping up. He ended up having an okay season by the end of it. Uh, and then Cologne and Boxberger drop off. So there's a really good chance of me signing a reliever and or closer on top of, of course, bringing in a starting pitcher. Catchers, nothing there for us. First base, nothing there for us. Second base, nothing really there for us. I mean, based off of who we have, LeMayhew's still there. He's a better option than anybody else. At third, Justin Turner, of course, not really an option. We have Duffy there, but you could also factor in. And maybe, maybe it does make sense to perhaps bring in a Justin Bohr for the power. He still hit 20 home runs last year. We could also look to make a deal, but maybe it would make sense to bring in a Justin Bohr or an Eduardo Nunez, whose RBI totals were low. He only played half the season. Uh, 276 average, great on base percentage. Maybe it would make sense to bring in him or a Hernandez and move LeMayhew to third and get rid of Matt Duffy. Uh, There's no replacement there at third, but then there's also a more defensive option of an Andrelton Simmons, who, you know, despite being more defense first, pretty solid on base percentage. 
31 years old, could also be an option. Eh, Galvis, not so much. Profar, good work. Good work. So I think that's really that really comes down to it. Or we could give Urena and Arias a chance. So I have a feeling Duffy is going to be on his way out. And then we get to some bigger options. I mean, Chris Davison left 118 RBIs last season. He's 33. But damn, that's that's kind of uh, enticing, we'll go with. So maybe? I mean, Jesus, though. He would have to be DH. He would have to be. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, Mike Trout. <laughs> Mike Trout is available. It speaks for itself. Uh, Marisnik as well, 20 home runs, 64 RBIs, pretty damn good if we wanted to look to change up the outfield a little bit, which we don't really have to. Jackie Bradley Jr., also there, just to get you a quick look at some of his numbers. And then in right, Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts. So we have options moving forward, whether it be a Clayton Kershaw, Mike Trout, uh, Mookie Betts. Like, I wanted to give you guys kind of the full look at every option we have moving forward. We should have no problem re-signing all the players that we've sent offers out for. So in the next episode, based off of your feedback, we will move forward. We'll see what this team looks like as we head closer to the next season. I should be able to wrap up the offseason in the next episode with the free agent period, the Rule 5, and of course spring training, where we may just be able to find more prospects. Of course, we signed or at least sent out offers to a couple of them in this episode. So with that, thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate the support. You know what you can do. You like, comment, subscribe, and click the bell and share. It's all the things that everybody else tells you to do. But seriously, do it because YouTube sucks um, in general. Uh, but mainly telling you as far as, you know, hey, this guy's live. And also, it's like, oh, well, you don't interact with this guy's content? You must not like it as much. You watch every video, but you don't interact with it? You must not like it as much. Let's not put it in your sub box. That's apparently a thing that's been happening. So thanks, YouTube. Uh, you know, adding that on top of, you know, deleting my channel out of nowhere. That was cool. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for supporting the series. I'm be the show is not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, we'll continue this series probably for a couple more seasons, and then, hey, we'll look to start up something else. Like I said, uh, between NHL franchise, MLB, Madden, it's, yeah, I'm a, I'm a franchise mode guy, man. I'm a franchise mode guy. Thank you for watching. I love you all, and I will see you next time.